Killian Murphy is an Irish actor. He made his professional debut in Enda Walsh's 1996 play Disco Pigs, a role he later reprised in the 2001 screen adaptation. Wikipedia Born, May 25, 1976, age 48 years, Douglas, Cork, Ireland. Spouse, Yvonne McGuinness, M. 2004. Height, 5 foot 8. Parents, Brendan Murphy. Children, Malachi Murphy, Aaron Murphy. Siblings, Pidey Murphy, Orla Murphy, Sile Murphy. Striking Irish actor Killian Murphy was born in Douglas, the oldest child of Brendan Murphy, who works for the Irish Department of Education, and a mother who is a teacher of French. He has three younger siblings. Murphy was educated at Presentation Brothers College, Cork. He went on to study law at University College Cork, but dropped out after about a year. During this time, Murphy also pursued an interest in music, playing guitar in various bands. Upon leaving university, Murphy joined the Corkadorka Theatre Company in Cork and played the lead role in Disco Pigs, amongst other plays. Various film roles followed, including a film adaptation of Disco Pigs, 2001. However, his big film break came when he was cast in Danny Boyle's 28 Days Later, 2002, which became a surprise international hit. This performance earned him nominations for Best Newcomer at the Empire Awards and Breakthrough Male Performance at the MTV Movie Awards. Murphy went on to supporting roles in high-profile films such as Cold Mountain, 2003, and Girl with a Pearl Earring, 2003, and then was cast in two villain roles, Dr. Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. The Scarecrow, in Batman Begins, 2005, and Jackson Ripner, in Red Eye, 2005. Although slight in nature for a villain, Murphy's piercing blue eyes helped to create creepy performances, and critics began to take notice. Manhola Dargis of the New York Times cited Murphy as a picture-perfect villain, while David Denby of the New Yorker noted he was both seductive and sinister. Later that year, Murphy starred as Patrick Kitten Braden, an Irish transgender woman in search of her mother in Neil Jordan's Breakfast on Pluto, 2005, a film adaptation of the Pat McCabe novel. Although the film was not a box office success, Murphy was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical, and he won Best Actor for the Irish Film and Television Academy Awards. The following year, Murphy starred in Ken Loach's The Wind That Shakes the Barley, 2006. The film was the most successful independent Irish film and won the Palme d'Or at the 2006 Cannes Film Festival. Murphy continued to take roles in a number of independent films and also reprised his role as the Scarecrow in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, 2008. Nolan is known for working with actors in multiple films, and cast Murphy in Inception, 2010, as Robert Fisher, the young heir of the multi-billion dollar empire, who was the target of DiCaprio's dream team. His most well-known work is starring as Thomas Shelby in the British TV show Peaky Blinders, beginning in 2013. Murphy continues to appear in high-profile films such as In Time, 2011, Red Lights, 2012, and The Dark Knight Rises, 2012, the final film in Nolan's Batman trilogy. Murphy is married to Yvonne McGuinness, an artist. The couple have two sons, Malachi and Aaron. Family Spouse Yvonne McGuinness, August 1, 2004, present, two children. Children Malachi Murphy Aaron Murphy Parents Brendan Murphy Jane Murphy Relatives Pidey Murphy, sibling Sile Murphy, sibling Orla Murphy, sibling Trademarks Bright blue eyes Strong, defined jawline Frequently works with director Christopher Nolan Trivia His American accent when auditioning for Batman Begins, 2005, was so convincing that the casting directors had no clue he was really from Ireland. Is the only actor playing a villain to appear in all three of Christopher Nolan's Batman films. An intensely private person, he prefers not to speak about his personal life and did not appear on any live TV chat shows until 2010. 
He was planning a career in law until he discovered the world of acting. His first name is pronounced Killian. Proposed to his wife Yvonne McGuinness while hill walking in Ireland. Agreed to a cameo in Tron, Legacy, 2010, because he is a huge fan of the original Tron, 1982. Good friends with Colin Farrell and Jonathan Rhys Myers. He still plays music and writes songs, but has no intention of starting another band or pursuing it professionally. Auditioned for the role of Batman in Batman Begins, 2005. The role was eventually given to Christian Bale. But director Christopher Nolan liked Killian's audition so much that he gave him a role as Batman's enemy Jonathan Crane slash Scarecrow, who is a developing character in this movie. He greatly admires actor Liam Neeson, looks at him as a surrogate movie father, is a huge fan of Doctor Who, 1963. He used to play in a Frank Zappa-influenced band called Sons of Mr. Green Jeans with his brother. Though he did not get the role of Batman in Batman Begins, 2005, he did get to wear the Batsuit during an audition with Christopher Nolan. His father was a school inspector and his mother was a French teacher. Is fluent in English and Irish. His French is at the level of knowing basic words. Is an occasional guest DJ on BBC Radio 6 Music. Was a vegetarian for 12 years. When he started eating meat again, it was venison. His sons Malachi and Aaron Murphy were both born in London. Although he is a vegetarian, he learned to chop up meat in an abattoir for his role as a butcher in Girl with a Pearl Earring, 2003. Has been in six films with Brendan Gleeson, Sweetie Barrett, 1998, 28 Days Later, 2002, Cold Mountain, 2003, Breakfast on Pluto, 2005, Perrier's Bounty, 2009, and In the Heart of the Sea, 2015. Attended and graduated from Presentation Brothers College, Cork, Ireland. Has two younger sisters, Sile and Orla Murphy. Is the first actor to play a DC Comics villain, The Scarecrow, in three consecutive films. Gene Hackman played Superman's nemesis, Lex Luthor, in three films, but did not appear consecutively. When he won the Best Actor Oscar for the title role in Oppenheimer, 2023, he became the first Irish-born actor to win this prestigious award at the Academy Awards. The statuette was presented to him by five previous Best Actor winners, Ben Kingsley, Nicolas Cage, Forrest Whitaker, Matthew McConaughey, and Brendan Fraser, Dolby Theatre, Los Angeles, March 10, 2024. In 2012, he won the Drama Desk Award for Best Solo Performance in Mr. Man had been pegged to play the lead in the independent movie, once, 2007. This did not materialize when he was hired for another project. Instead, the role went to Glenn Hansard, the person who created the songs for the film. One of his most used quotes is from the late American director Sidney Pollack, It takes 30 years to make an actor. He says this quote a lot in interviews took part in a campaign video in support of the repealing of Article 8 of the Constitution of Ireland that consecrated human lives from their conception and banned abortion. Watching the film Scarecrow when he was about 14, it stayed with him, particularly the scene where Al Pacino has a breakdown in a public fountain. At 23, he auditioned for director William Boyd for a part in the trench but didn't get it despite the fact that Boyd had also written it. However, Boyd was impressed by him and wrote a small part for him. As of 2024, he has appeared in three films that were nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, Inception, 2010, Dunkirk, 2017, and Oppenheimer, 2023, with the latter being a winner in the category. Has a younger brother, Pidey Murphy, a design engineer. Became the first leading actor on a Christopher Nolan film to receive a Best Actor Oscar nomination for his role in Oppenheimer, 2023. His youngest son, Aaron Murphy, played the title character in the play Hamnet, which opened in Dublin in 2018 and was performed in London, New York, Boston, Brisbane, and Hong Kong until 2019. Aaron Murphy makes his debut as Rick in Taika Waititi's feature film, Clara and the Sun. In 2015, after living for 14 years in London, Killian and his family moved back to Ireland where they briefly lived in Crossfoot Park in Duan Leagare, Company. Dublin, before settling in the Monkstown district of Dublin. 
He revealed in March 2024 having adopted a vegan diet, making him the fourth vegan actor winning the Academy Award for Best Actor or Best Actress alongside Natalie Portman, Emma Stone, and Joaquin Phoenix. Quotes, I'd probably have been wealthier if I had stayed with law, but pretty miserable doing it. It's basically lazy journalism if they say I'm the new Colin Farrell. This thing about heat, it's all just hot air. I'm breaking the Irish typecast, you're an actor who's Irish, not an Irish actor. And you shouldn't be limited by your extraction. On auditioning for Batman Begins, 2005, well, the first part of the question, I think if you ask any male if you really want to get into a real suit, that was a dream come true, obviously, and then just to get to work with Chris, even for that little test, was amazing as well, and then, I don't know, he saw something in it that he thought maybe he could use for the other characters. On accepting the role of the Scarecrow in Batman Begins, 2005, I can have a bit of fun with it, too, because my only motivation really is being bad. I love doing proper dramatic character studies, but it's also good to have a bit of fun, dress up and stuff. Well, we are doppelgangers. On that Howard Stern nearly played the Scarecrow. Killian's role in Batman Begins, 2005, in an early attempted adaptation. If there's an opportunity to work with Ken Loach, you can't really turn that down. He's made some of the finest films of the past 25 years. Whether you like or dislike his movies, there's never a bad performance in them, ever. There's none of the bullshit. There's no trailers, no nonsense, no pampering. It's a breath of fresh air. It's easy to take the check, you know, but if you want to have any longevity, just take things that have artistic merit in them. I want to do quality. If it's good telly, I'll do it. If it's good theater, I'll do it. I've a very, very close-knit group of friends from Ireland. They and my family are the most important things to me. On his role as a terrorist in Red Eye, 2005, I don't know if anyone will ever sit beside me on a plane again. Journalists have a myopic view of your versatility. They're like you only play the creep. If you behave like a celebrity, then people will treat you like a celebrity, and if you don't, they won't. There's not much to write about me in the tabloids. Today, I pick and choose my films very carefully. There's nothing I've done so far that I can't talk about with commitment and passion. But you can make wonderful films within a small, independent environment and you can make wonderful films in Los Angeles, within the studio system. You hear a lot of actors saying, I'd never go to Hollywood and sell out. But if it's a good script and a good director, why not? To shut oneself off completely is, I think, very limiting. Too many filmmakers today are trying to put their work into a box. I can't stand that. Making movies is a lot of work. Let's take some risks. On his character in Breakfast on Pluto, 2005, to me, someone's sexuality is usually the least interesting thing about them. It's secondary. The only reason it becomes a source for dramatic storytelling is because people have made such an issue out of it. I'm not worried about being pegged, but it's important for me to knock down any perceptions of me that are out there. I think there's such a thing as a performance gene. If it's in your DNA, it needs to come out. For me, it originally came out through music, then segued into acting and came out through there. I always needed to get up and perform. I've always felt that the less the public knows about you, the more effective you can be when you go to portray someone else. Asked whether he finds himself drawn to dark characters, for me, drama is conflict. I'm not interested in a good man's life. I'm interested in contradiction. I'm interested in pressure, I'm interested in duress. All the great works of art, or film or literature, in my opinion, have elements of those in them. Because who wants to write about happy people? 2004, don't fucking call this article Murphy's Law. 2004, a lot of this success if it happened to me when I was 18 well then, I don't know. But I'm a bit older, and I've been there, and it's not that alluring to me now. When I act, I want it to be the most important thing that I do, but when I'm not doing it, I don't give a shit about it. 2004, on how he prepared for his role in Girl with a Pearl Earring, 2003, we went to this abattoir in Luxembourg and chopped shit up. It was my idea. 
why would a vegetarian take it upon himself to hack swine into little bits? Have you ever seen someone smoking on film who doesn't smoke? They always do something dumb, and immediately it's obvious they don't smoke. He laughs, it's not method acting it's just so, when I come on screen, people don't go, hang on a minute, that guy's never carried a pig before. Otherwise, some butcher in the audience will stand up and rip on the whole movie. 2004, I don't consider myself copy. Most magazines just want to know who you're fucking or who you're slagging off. My objective is simply to make good art. 2004, I spend a lot of time at home, actually. I don't really do the party or the premiere thing unless it's my own, and then it would be rude not to go. It's not a very hectic life at all, really. 2017, on his concerns about the Irish education system, which he feels did him few favors, focusing as it does on multiple disciplines, you get these really bright and creative kids who get eaten up by that system. If they, my own children, come out from education with some degree of self-confidence and self-awareness, that's enough. And, hopefully, they will make some good friends. Initially, I was the reluctant one when it came to moving back, but I was quite quickly convinced. Irish people are brilliant and you have to go away and come back to realize it. 2017, on moving back to Ireland after having lived in London for 14 years, it is a common Irish narrative, to move away in your 20s to England or America to establish yourself and find your calling, and then come home. I always thought that it was retrogressive, but now I realize that it is just natural. You want to be with your parents as they get older and you want your children to be aware of their culture. Did your boys rebel when they were told they'd be leaving their school friends behind? We promised them a dog, so that was just fine. I am the only one that walks it, of course. 2017, a director, I forget who, told me that it takes 30 years to make an actor. And I believe that. You have to learn your craft, learn your trade, and also you have to live a life and experience things. I have been doing this for 20 years now, so, hopefully, in another 10 years I will be an actor. Honestly, if you stick around long enough, don't make an idiot of yourself and aspire to make good work, people go, all right. He is here to stay. 2017, on struggling with press duties and avoiding TV chat shows until a few years ago, I was very uncomfortable with this. Gesture at journalists tape recorder and notepad, the reductive nature nowadays of most journalism is very frustrating. One newspaper report on the most recent series of Peaky Blinders focused on the bearing of his bottom. It is getting absurd with the dumbing down, the level of questions you get asked. Seriously, though, if someone asks a stupid question, you can only give a stupid answer or appear arrogant. But all of this stuff I tolerate a lot better now. Patience is something that as a young man I didn't have when waiting for parts to arrive or waiting for people to behave as I wanted them to. 2017, having just turned 40, I hope I've achieved some sort of wisdom or patience. I suppose professionally, as an actor, empathy is the most powerful tool you have, really, in trying to understand a character and trying to understand other people's motivations and so on. 2005, I couldn't deal with the Hollywood bullshit without my wife. I wouldn't be here without her. I wouldn't be doing anything without her. 2019, I have an amazing wife, the Irish artist Yvonne McGuinness, and I couldn't do this without her and her understanding.